Hey, what's happening? I'm Miles. And I'm Mark Maltabridge. And you're watching Heavy Consequence on... Consequence of Sound. You know, Walk This Guy is the new album. Cool. And um, let's talk about the first single, Wouldn't You Rather. Uh, just one of my favorites on the album as well. And there's, you know, there's a monster riff on there, Mark, and uh, also some really soaring vocals from you as well, Miles. Uh, if you don't mind talking about that one, both musically and lyrically. Yeah, that, you know, on this this record, we kind of wrote um, a separate for the most part where I'd bring in a batch of songs and Miles brought in a batch of songs that happened to be one of Miles' songs. So it's funny, my, uh, our producer told me, I can't tell who's writing what on this <laughs> record. Those riffs are Miles' riffs in that song, you know. So like I said, the songs that I wrote, I brought in the, the completed songs, he brought in the completed songs, and then we kind of helped one another finalize the songs for the most part, though. Um, you know that that uh, these songs are either from my camp or his camp, and that was one of his. Yeah, it was funny. It's funny you bring up Alba. I was just told a story earlier. The riff on that was born out of frustration because Elvis, you know, oftentimes Mark and I would upload our demos, and then we can't you know, wait. To get What's Elvis going to think? You know. So I put up a few, and then Elvis calls and he'd be like, "Okay, we need to talk. Here's the deal. Here's what we don't have yet. We need this kind of song." And I remember I hung up the phone. I think I was in, I think I was in Poland or Austria. I was in Austria, and I was just like, you know, curse word. <laughs> and I picked up a guitar and I just went, dun -na -dun -na -dun -na -dun -na. and I was like, wait, that might actually work. You know, it was just that it was a riff born out of frustration really, that, that we didn't get the thumbs up. So, so thank you, Elvis, for you know, lighting the fire under my ass. <laughs> I also really dig the track "Native Son," and. Uh, I think, Mark, last year I was talking to you about your Tremonti album, mm -hmm. and you were almost telling me how, like, uh, you know, even though you go fairly heavy and hard on Alter Bridge, uh, you know, Tremonti is kind of your outlet for getting your metal mm -hmm. on. And uh, I feel like Native Son, you guys definitely get the metal on in that one. And there's almost like a uh, system of a down vibe in that one. There's a kind of this Middle Eastern uh, intro and then that start-stop mm -hmm. dynamics. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear more about that one, again, both uh, musically and lyrically. That was one of the contenders for first single for us. You know, I think we had it broken down to three or four songs, and that was one of them. It's, uh, uh, you always want to record the songs that are going to be a good time live. You know, that's going to be a, definitely a, um, in the set list, I would, I would think. And uh, we enjoy it. That was one of those songs that, um, the final pieces came together in the, you know, in the, in the studio and we all loved it. And, um, yeah, just a, just a good, fun, energetic, um, you know, great song, in my opinion. It's a track that kids can dance to. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk about it a little bit lyrically as well? Yeah. Yeah. So that song, it, it was actually inspired by, um, the idea of feeling alienated, and and the, the genesis the genesis of it really came about um, from a lyrical standpoint from an interview I saw a long time ago with a guy named Joseph Campbell who's big big influence on me um, and it was an interview that Bill Moyers was given when it was a PBS special decades ago but he said some things in that interview that really inspired um, some of that some of that lyric so it's been fun to see that blossom. Cool. A couple more tracks I want to get into. Uh, Forever Falling. Mm -hmm. That's one where you sing lead on the verses. Mm -hmm. And you did that on the last album on one track, too. And obviously, you do it with Tremonti. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I remarked last year as well that your voice, your vocals seem to get stronger each time. Oh, thank you. And um, can you talk about kind of, you know, that track deciding, OK, you know, this one Mark's going to sing verses on and, and also about the song itself? Um, that was one, um, I really, um, I really liked it going into the album. I really wanted to make the album and, uh, Elvis was kicking back on the verses, you know, it was a little too, uh, uh, he said King Diamond, <laughs> I think it was it. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> I know. I love King Diamond, but, um, he's like, you know, I love the chorus. I love the bridge. I love everything else, but the verse is, is not selling it for me. So, um, before, before I could try to write a new verse to it miles had come to me and said you know why don't you sing you know i think you know a lot of people online were like you know what um let's you know see if mark sings a song on this record so that was the one um he was like why don't you try singing on that one 
Um, so it was kind of like a last minute, let me try to put together the vocals for this. So we had to pitch the song down a step and a half so I could sing it or, or, or a whole step down. And, um, it's just a fun challenge. You know, it's, I rewrote the, the verse in a roundabout way. It's funny, the drums were tracked. So I had to write a verse that fit their existing rhythm, but changed the chords and whatnot. So it's, uh, no, I like, it's fun. I love singing, you know, singing is, is, uh, one of the most, um, uh, I don't know, fulfilling things to do live. So it's great to be able to do it. Keep my voice in, in shape between uh, solo records too, you know? But I, did, I did talk to Slash a couple of months ago um, and he did say, you know, GNR are going to play a, a run of dates this fall and then they're really going to hit in, you know, head into the studio and record that long awaited, much anticipated album. Right. Um, so one question is, is that going to allow you more time to just, hey, I can really focus on alter bridge for like you know the foreseeable future i know you have your own solo project as well and then just uh you guys as fans are you looking forward to hearing that uh that album with the uh, slash and duff and axel back together hell yeah i think i mean look if, um as a fan that's gonna be epic so so yeah i think that uh, it's gonna be real exciting to see how that plays out and and uh yeah i mean i think that um when everybody is doing their various projects and making records and touring and whatnot, it, you know, it opens up windows to do solo projects and more time with Alter Bridge or whatever. And so these are wonderful situations to be in where we feel I like I'm crazy lucky that I get to do all this stuff and it's still happening after 10 years. You know, I keep, I've always been the kind of, my friends always tease me though. as because for the longest time, I was like, oh, it's all going to end like next year and it's done. And then I'm going to go back to teaching guitar. <laughs> and I think I've, I'm to the point now where I feel like, man, this might actually last for a while. <laughs> I get to be a musician. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think you've carved out a nice little career for yourself. 